Today we're going to build an Arduino 6 DOF robotic arm and we're going to use Botango to smooth out the movements. Botango is a free open source software platform designed for animating physical objects such as robotics and animatronics and allows users of any skill level to design complex motion sequences, synchronize multiple devices, and manage time for various actions. The Botango software can integrate with hardware through microcontrollers like Arduino. Today we'll be using Arduino Uno and use that to enable real-time control and playback of animations created in the software. Today we'll be using Arduino Uno R3 and six servo motors, five of them being the MG995 servo and then one of them being the MG996R servo. We'll also be using this gripper that I purchased on Amazon and it also comes with the MG996R servo. We'll also be using some terminal blocks to help manage the power for the servo motors, we'll be using a plug connector, some jumper wires, and a thousand microfarad capacitor to smooth out the power. I'll also be using the 75 watt DC converter for 5 volt power to the servos. The servo motors will be connected to each other by these brackets that you can also purchase on Amazon. And I use some 14 gauge wire to connect the DC converter to the terminal blocks. I've used this gripper before in a previous video and my biggest problem with it is that it doesn't pick up stuff easily. I think it may be made out of brushed nickel or something like that where the, the bolts and, and screws don't stay in place very well and they do jiggle loose over time, pretty quick actually, and it's hard to get to the nuts and bolts to tighten them up. You have to unscrew everything, take it all apart. So for that reason, it's a little bit frustrating. So I might be upgrading my gripper here in the near future. The MG996R servo is what operates the gripper. All the other servos are the 995. The MG995 servos probably are not ideal for the rest of the arm. Uh, ideally, I want the MG996R with more torque but the MG995 is what I had, so I went ahead and used it and it'll work for this demonstration. So I connected all the servo motors as you see here and I connect them to a wooden platform at the very bottom. I connected all the power leads from the servo motors to the terminal block, the VCC lead, and then the ground lead as well. I connected that to terminal blocks too. And then I connected the ground to the Arduino. The servos are operating on five volts, which is fine because I don't have that much of a load Although you do have to consider the load of the servo on the bottom having to lift all the other servos and hardware. But for this video, 5 volts is going to work out just fine. At components101.com you can see that the MG995 servo operates from 4.8 volt to 7.2 volt. I often use 5 volt just because there's not a heavy load involved. But at its maximum load it can be pulling a little over 1 amp of current. Now if you're using the MG996R servo with a little more torque, you'll notice here that at 6 volts, you could be pulling a little over 2 amps of current. For this DC converter, I'm plugging in a 24 volt supply and it's coming out 5 volt. Uh, this could be a hazard here. You don't want these metal parts exposed, so don't do that. I may have to change this at some point, but um, that's not good. And the power I'm going to get from the DC converter is going to be 5 volts. I'm going to add a 1000 microfarad capacitor here just to smooth out the power in case there are any fluctuations. And of course any of the signal pins from our servo motors can go on any of the pulse width modulation pins on the UNO. And of course we're going to connect the ground wire to the UNO from the ground terminal. And that's pretty much it for our setup. Here's a diagram in case you have any questions about how this was set up. The first thing I'm going to do is go to Botango.com and download the software. Here you can download the latest version of the software. I'm going to download it for Windows. There's also Mac and Linux software available. Once you place it in the folder on your desktop, you extract all on the zip file. Once you've extracted it, you can click on the folder and inside the folder is everything you need for Botango animation. It's got the Botango Arduino drivers. You've got all the libraries and this is what we will use right here after we export our animation from Botango. There's also some readme files and some documentation you may want to take a look at. But once you've installed Botango, you open up the software and then let's start from there. Here's the Botango software and we'll just go ahead and create the uh, animation for the arm. If you want more detail, I will uh, link videos that I've done previously with this software in the description, so check that out. So this screen allows us to create a new project or open a current project that we're working on. And this is a list of the files that you've saved from recent projects. We're going to go ahead and start a new one. And I will just um, create a setup like I have here with my uh, servo arm. So we'll go to create part, go to cube. I want to shrink this down 
a little bit here just to make it a platform. You don't need to do this, but it does help. And you can see over here, it's getting smaller on the Y. So that can help you gauge. Oh, let's uh, grab that. There we go. We'll just make it thin. That's good enough for me. Go over here to create part, and we'll put our first servo down. Click on servo. And now we want to lift it up a little bit here. So we'll go there. Grab that green arrow, lift it up. This doesn't have to be perfect, but um, it should represent what you have here. And let's see, that is exactly how mine is situated here. I'm looking at it. It's correct. So that's good. Now we'll go over here and set this up. We're going to call this servo motor one. And then we'll come down here to pin. Now if you're using the, uh, the servo driver and, and you're using the IC squared, you can you go here and set that up and you make sure that you have the correct IC squared address here. But we're just plugging it into Arduino. So we will just set the pin at, I put this one in pin three. Uh, any pulse width modulation pin is fine. And it is 180 degree servo motor. If yours is different, you can check it there. And uh, so come over here and we are ready to put on a joint because that is where the rotation happens. So we'll lift that up, spin around a little bit, set that right on top. Just like that. And we'll come over here and link it to a motor. So we can link it to servo one. You can link it here, link it here. Let's link it there, it's fine. And then, uh, yeah, preview. Okay, now I don't have these all connected to each other yet. So we do that over here with the parent-child um, connection. We'll do that at the end. So now I have another servo motor. Servo, I wanna lift it up here and put it above this. And if you can't grab it here, you can actually make stuff disappear right here. Or you can just grab it over here and lift it up a little bit and my next servo is on its side so I want to rotate it a little bit and you can see over here the degree is changing so we'll just hit 90 just to make it perfectly flat and then we will move it back down just like that it looks great and uh, again it doesn't have to be perfect you just want a representation of what you got. At least that's how I do it. And oh, let's set this one up. Uh, we'll call this servo motor two. And we'll come down here. And I have this one on pin 10 for whatever reason. I don't know what I was thinking. And then let's come over here. Let's actually name this joint one just so that it matches the servo motor. And then we're going to put another Put another part on here. I'm going to put another joint right here. And this joint rotates um, a different direction. So let's turn this 90 degrees. Preview. Maybe I want to turn that around. It looks like it might be rotating backwards. And you can always fix this too if you see something's rotating strangely. Um, let's do 180. Make it kind of perfect. And then you can move it out a little bit as well. Kind of line it up. I guess it is lined up. Maybe we can move that up a little bit. There we go. That's fine. Alright, now we want to link this to the motor we can link it there or link it over here and if you link it over here you'll see it flash twice right there preview now it kind of looks like it's rotating forward I think we'll see now the next thing I want to do is create an arm like a an extension so I'll just use cylinder come up here we want to shrink it a little bit and again, if you want to make it disappear so you can see stuff behind it, 
Click on that eyeball there. All right, let's make it thin. And a little bit shorter. Well, maybe I'm... <laughs> let's rotate it the other direction. Not that far. All right, let's rotate it first. Rotate. There we go. Now let's shrink it up a little bit here. Here. Now you come over here and you can pivot in the center, top, bottom, but we're going to pivot on the bottom. So it'll move this up and it'll be. I'm perfectly attached to that right and we'll attach it over here in a little bit make sure all this is correct now that we've done that it's a bit long so I'll shrink it a little bit more I think that looks fine all right next thing we want to do is add another servo motor let's move move this one up and this one I have in the other direction here opposite direction so we will rotate it and you can see that it's over here um, It's supposed to be 280, so we'll make it, I think, oh, not 280, or 270. There we go. And then we will lower it a little bit. And now I have this one connected to, let's name it first, servo motor 3. And I have this connected to pin 5. And again, you can connect it to any of your pulse width modulation pins so over here it says three let's uh, not forget to name that one joint two because it's with motor two just to keep keep it organized now the next thing I'm going to do is create a part create a joint move this up and my joint is in a forward direction here whoops Control Z to back it up to the previous movement. And let's do 270 again. Now preview. Uh, it looks like it's going forward. If it's not, we can always adjust it. And we will go ahead and link it to a motor. Link it here or link it here. We'll link it there. And let's name it name it joint three next thing I want to do is make a small uh, tube looking extension you can duplicate those as well instead of making a whole new one that's about the same size Let's move it up. Make sure you grab hold of that arrow. I want it to pivot from the bottom. And maybe it works better pivoting from center. I don't know. I don't know what that even looks like. I've just always used the bottom. Now let's move it down a little bit. Actually, let's shrink this down. Maybe about like that. And then move it down here. There we go. All right, we can even name this um, Cylinder Structure 3 and Cylinder Structure 2. That's what they're connected to. Next thing we're going to do is create another servo motor. Let's bring it up. I 
that one is rotated to the right. I'm going to control Z because I moved it a little bit. Now I'm going to rotate it to the right. Let's scoot in, press um, center scroll button on my mouse down and move up. All right, now I'm going to rotate it a little bit to the right. I'm going to turn this to 270. And then it looks like I have this like that. So let's put this at 90. And move it down just a bit. And over just a bit because I want to I'm going to attach another servo motor to it. Let's go ahead and name this one. This will be servo motor th uh, 4. And it is on pin 6. All right. Now we need another servo motor. And we are going to move this one up. Whoops. Whoops. I just did control Z to back up in case I moved anything. And looking from my uh, looking from the back of the servo arm, I have this one rotated this direction right here. Oh, this direction. So let's do 270 here. Scoot it over a bit. Scoot it over here. Let's scoot it back some, maybe. All right, and then we will call this servo motor five. And that one I put on uh, pin seven. Now I have another joint, and we will move that up. All you're doing is just building your arm here for reference. This joint will act kind of like a wrist to rotate the gripper. And we'll call this uh, joint six because I'm going to put another servo motor one here and this is the one that it will be attached to and this servo motor is rotated the servo motor is rotated to the left we'll put 90 on Y and then it is rotated forward we'll put 90 on Z and then we'll lower it We'll call this servo motor 8, and it will be on pin 8. Sorry, servo motor 6. What am I thinking? There we go. And that's joint 6. I just looked at my arm. Uh, I'm going to change something here. I'm going to change. I'm going to link this to this motor actually and not this one I don't know if I said that one before but this one will turn this motor so this is five this will be joint five and then my next part will be I just hit that uh, middle mouse button so I can move up and down and right click so I can spin and scroll in and out and I move this down maybe let's see move it out now I want to rotate it I will rotate that 
90 degrees. And this is what will open and close the claw, the gripper. And I want to link this to this motor. And you can add more, more pieces on here if, if you want to actually create the gripper. These are just the parts that, uh, that I'm going to control for the arm. So I was looking at my arm again, and every motor is going to have a joint. So we are going to put another joint right here for this motor, right here. So let's move this joint up. Select our move tool, move it up. Select this motor, move it out a little bit. Move this over and we're going to rotate it. Uh, which way was, let's see. Uh, 270, let's do 270 for this one. 270. All right, there we go, and we'll link this motor, just like so, preview, I think that's good. All right, next thing we want to do is connect them all over here, but I do want to name this joint four. And this one will be a joint six, apparently, just to keep everything straight. Everything looks like it's linked. And I'm just going to click on each item here just to make sure that there's a link. Um, I'll just do a few here. I think they're all linked. What I'm going to do now is just reset this whole list of items by pulling them away from what they're connected to, the parent-child relationship here. So I'm going to pull them and, and kind of drag them, I think, to the top works best to get those little arrows, the down arrows, uh, removed so that they're all equal. And then we will link them correctly. Grab your cube structure, put that up here at the top. Then we're going to do joint one, attach it to that. And then joint one will be... Uh, Connect it with servo motor one, just like that, and then you should see a little arrow there. Then we're going to do joint two, should be connected to joint one. Servo motor two, connected to joint two. A cylinder structure two, should be connected to joint two. Then we're going to do joint three, connected to joint two. Servo motor three, connected to joint three. Then cylinder structure three connected to joint three. Then we're going to do joint four connected to, whoops, yeah, that's right. And then servo motor four connected to joint four. Then joint five connected to joint four. Servo motor five connected to joint five. Joint six connected to joint uh, five. Servo motor six connected to joint six. And now they should all be connected. And then when I test this joint right here, everything turns appropriately. Looks good. I think. So if it doesn't, you can arrange it to work correctly, but I think that what we got here is going to be good. Before the animation, well, first of all, let's go back up here and you see a little dot above this floppy disk. Click it to save. We'll call this example, I don't know, two, whatever. And I will save that in my robot arm file here. All 
All right, now let's go to animate. Here you've got uh, dope, the dope sheet, view keyframes in order on the timeline, and then you got a graph where you can adjust the movements. So let's add a track. We're going to add joint tracks here. And I don't know if you can add them all together, but I don't know. I just add them individually. It doesn't take that long, but uh, there's joint four, there's joint five, and there is joint six. All right, and now we'll click on graph. So, um, okay okay cool so they're all highlighted and I clicked that there so each one should have a starting point here no okay I was wrong so let's add um, a starting point a keyframe starting point for each one so now joint two joint three you gotta actually click these I guess to to create a keyframe so all right, and if you look at the dope, um, now you can see that every one of them has a starting point. And what I'm going to do is select that, copy. I wonder if I can, because I like to, I like it to end where it begins, so that it doesn't jerk. Like if you end at an angle that's way far off from this and you hit play then it will violently swing back to this position so I like to end where this begins that's been my best experience so let's just create some more keyframes here we won't do anything too radical so just some smooth movements something that we can play around with and learn with and it's you don't have to have one at every um, every keyframe you know and you can take some out select the night hit delete and maybe delete there we go so with each one you can put your cursor I guess this is the um, the timer cursor I don't know what you call this let's move it over here and you can move this up and down and you can see how it will affect the arm as I move it up and down you can smooth out movements or you can make them really fast I don't use that a whole lot but it is an option so we'll move that there I don't like to do anything too wild first until I actually attach my robot arm because if you get carried away and your your degrees are way off for whatever reason it can really create a mess so I just create a little bit of movement or you don't even have to create any movement at all now we can attach the uh, we can actually plug in our servo arm and then play around with this but I just want you to see the animation as we go ahead and, and just move up, move some servos really really small movements here so come back here click on play and the arm should do something like this maybe we'll see and if you want it to move even more of course you're going to come way down here right now that I move a lot let's see this is weird this should um, be the second one so oh I see there we go I was out of order let's 
let's try this again so this should turn it um, horizontally this should bend it from the base from down here there we go and once we connect our arm and see the movements we can adjust this as we need to but before you uh, do anything else you want to click save that little dot up there that means you, it's unsaved so we click save okay now we have our robotic arm connected to the Arduino and to the power source so the next thing we're going to do is open up the software and I think I will keep this in screen here just like that and so now we're at the build screen I want to go to the animate screen real quick and make sure I don't have any kind of radical curves before I set this thing up uh, just so that my arm doesn't bend in an unexpected way so make sure that all these are kinda you know nothing too radical here or you can flatten them all if you want to uh, from here we're gonna go up here to hardware you see that the hardware button is not lit up I have everything plugged in so I'm gonna hold this thing because um, you know it may fall forward if you don't have it secured it may fall forward may fall backwards so keep that in mind I'm gonna click on live and default driver I'll turn that on as well and you saw that just clamp shut and now from here we're gonna go to drivers on the driver uh, default driver is the driver name select port I want to select port from the list there's also another select port by name so I'm just going to select port from the list and here's COM 11 click on that see it just went backwards so if I wasn't I wasn't holding it it would have hit the desk um, if you don't have it supported so keep that in mind and down here upload about tango driver so we will go to I'm using an uno so now it is uploading the driver so that the Arduino can speak to the software and then this should turn green and the rest is advanced settings which we will not touch at this moment so let's go back to status and then we'll just turn on each of these motors and again I hold this while I do it um, just so nothing <laughs> slams against the desk and I'm gonna start up here with the top motor because that seems to be the easiest one to start with. If you start with the bottom, um, it, it'll throw itself forward if it's set at a certain position. So I don't like surprises. So I'm going to start, actually, I lied. Um, I'm going to start down here. All right. Uh, motor six. Okay. Five, four, three, two, and then one. All right, so that's the position that we have. Let's go back to animate. And I want two to be straightened out a little bit here. So we'll come over here. And I want that to be just like that. And another thing that you can do is you can go back to build. And when you go to build, it will change position possibly no okay all right I click that and I see how it moves back I click that and moves forward I want to adjust that so click on servo and I'll click on that uh, pulse width modulation at zero and if I increase it It'll straighten up a little bit. There we go. There we go. Use motor motors home at zero. So fix mismatch for me. All right. Let's see how that does. Now, this motor here, this is one, two, three, four. I want to straighten out motor four. So I'm going to do the same thing. I want that to go straight up. 
because that's just where I want to start. And now, so let's just type in 642. All right, then click on joint four. Use motors home at zero, right? Fix mismatch for me, okay. And I wanna fix this one right here. It does seem to be open too far. This will close it a little bit. But I want it open far enough to grasp, grasp something, but I don't want it open like a crazy amount. So we'll put that there. I'll set this at 1046. Because that's what I see right here. Then we'll click on joint six. Come up here, set this at zero. Fix mismatch for me. I think that's good. Now we'll go back to animate. And it'll do this right here until I fix that, which we will do in just a second. All right, now we're gonna straighten this back up at two. That is zero. Um, let's see. Three, four is at zero. And this is as far back as I'll go, so this is fine um, with the motors. So starting down here is all right. Um, there may be another better way to do it. If so, yeah, let me know. Um, I don't really, I haven't really used this a whole lot yet. I joint five, um, turning the uh, the gripper, and then remember I set this one at zero too. So all right. And now I want this, actually all the ones I set at zero, I want to be zero over here. Just because I like to end exactly how I started. All right, so I'm gonna pull this one down as well. And this is fine. I won't use that during this video. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm going to expand the screen a little bit here. Actually, if there, if anything changes in this area that I'm covering up, I will let you know. All right, so this right here will turn my robot arm, my robotic arm. All right, I'm going to start out there. And you can actually just work on a small portion in 15 minute or 15 second segments so you come back here play and you can work on that and then you can move this to the next 15 that's typically how I do it and the next 15 might look a little bit different that way you're not doing too much at one time and you may want that there all right let's play that next segment all right or if you want to do work on 30 seconds at a time, you just do like that. And it'll stop and then you can just work your way across the whole animation like that. And then make your adjustments in this area. If you want to add something, you come over here and click on the plus symbol. And you can add one of these dots if you want to add two for whatever reason. Just add that. All right, and then maybe you can make it a little wild right there. And then push play. And then play. So it just plays that one segment. All right, now we'll move to the next. All right, and then you just work your way across, just like that. That's all you're doing add maybe turn and you don't want it to be too sharp that's another reason I like to work in small segments I like to know what's going on all right and this doesn't exactly match up actually I'm turning left when my arm is actually turning right that's fine I don't pay a whole lot of attention to this right now you can fix it but uh, I'm more interested in just figuring out down here on the bottom. 
so yeah. But one helpful thing is that you can go into build if you're not happy with the start positions. You can go into build and you can change these um, motor positions by clicking on servo first and then click on either left or right and you can change positions then you can go back and click on the joint and then decide which one you want to uh, to start from which one is going to be considered home so I think that's very helpful just remember to adjust on the motor first then click on the joint and then you go back to animate and it is going to do whatever the last position your arm was in so keep that in mind you see how it swung out here um, you might want to set it back at a uh, position like that that's what I'm talking about being surprised you're not really thinking about that happening so you switch over to build and then you switch back over to animate and it's it goes back to that you know wherever you have it on the timeline here so if you have it all stretched out it'll go from you know like this position to whatever crazy position really fast so I don't like that and uh, that could have happened here because I wasn't paying attention so just keep that in mind as well now from this point let's say that we're happy with what we have okay let's say that we are happy with our animation and we want to export so let's export the code default animation check a de um, export default driver with all the motors and default animation I, d I don't export loop animation default driver and export and then select your file you want to export to we will export this to test okay and now we go to the file now we are in the test file and you should have these three items right here uh, in that file so let's go ahead and cut and paste these into our Botango folder right into the Arduino driver folder paste now we're going to open up this Arduino file right here the INO file okay and as you can see it added those three files the generate command streams CPP and the uh, generate command streams H files right here I want to go to which tab is it this tab auto config and since I'm going to be using my Arduino I want to uncomment this right here use command stream and uh, come down here if you are using the, the driver you would uncomment this right here but I am not using it so I will put those back my drivers my uh, motors are directly connected to the Arduino and then from here um, I have a button I added a button to my setup and I want this to be a push button so I'm going to change this here's a look at my 5 volt converter and my power and ground Arduino and then my button that I just added because I want it to be a button activation since I added a push button to my setup and I want the animation to start when I push the button I will add that to the INO file here the INO tab so let's do that now okay we have our button on pin 11 and let's go ahead and upload this let's go ahead and upload this to Arduino I'm going to select the board port 
and upload. Let's get rid of that. Okay, I'm just going to unplug and re plug our Arduino in. And yep, if it's not secured, it will fall. try this again all right okay so it's uh, it's done let's switch screens here all right and now when I press and now when I press my button it'll do the animation that I set it up to do. Check the description for the modification that I made in the INO tab. Maybe you can use that. Of course you'll have to export your own files from Botango, but maybe you can work with that uh, modification that I made on the INO tab. If there is interest in the Botango software for animation, we'll definitely do some more building on what we've done here. And we can also explore some of the other free open source software like Node-RED and ROS. So the goal is to post more animation and robotic videos among the other Arduino videos I've been posting. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to like it by clicking a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing if you enjoy these types of videos. And share it with somebody else who may find benefit out of it. And I'll see you again with another video.